Good evening, citizens of Post-Apocalyptia! This is your disc jockey after doomsday, DJ Pony. I guess you could say results matter, but the Duchess strutting her stuff up and down the hallways hasn't hurt either. If you ask me, that's a much better view than the gold-plated chandeliers. Because I'll get to sip tea in the corner, watching you get yelled at for talking about her ass on the radio. As you Wastelanders can hear, my wonderful assistant Homage has been making guest appearances on the air lately. This doesn't exactly seem like the best place to keep political prisoners, but when you're neurotic enough and the wartime paranoia is at its peak, you end up doing some crazy things. There's something humbling about using bottles of Sparkle Cola as emergency lanterns. Good thing those isotopes have a few thousand half-lives left in them. But luckily, that is where our friend comes in, who also happens to be the next guest for Confessions of a Wasteland Pony. Welcome to the program, Miss Amber Horn. <laughs> Glad to be back. Five months buried underground in a steel box with a few hundred other ponies all out of their minds with worry. The Overmare likes to credit us with keeping the peace. But the real hero is Leafy. She's one of the gardeners that minds the Staples Orchard. Don't know how she did it, but she's growing tobacco in secret and none of the guards want to arrest her for it, cause... There's a rumor in the stable. One of the guards said he saw... when the bombs fell. The princesses... The princesses are dead. <laughs> you could say that. I started hanging around him and his mates during school so I could research the stable's... misfits for Arya Moon. It's been a few years, but I'm finally ready to publish this beast. Well, you wouldn't deprive a lady of her favorite pastime. Some ponies find meaning in worship. Some ponies drink and fight and fuck. And me? I guess I like to watch ponies dance. I like to play with them. You can't do this! Velvet Remedy stomped and snorted about the cattle car. Empty, but for the three of us. Little Pip, it's one thing to kill in self-defense, or to protect others, but this... She turned on me with a stare that could petrify the Overmare herself. This is murder. Calamity was scowling. I have to agree with Velvet Remedy on this one, Little Pip, he said flatly. I understand the talents, can even respect them just a bit, but I ain't a mercenary. You do this, I ain't with you. You know that song I was writing about? Staying noble and true? That was about you, Little Pip. And this is you failing that on every level to even consider this. She backed away from me, her voice softening with regret. I am so disappointed in you. I felt like I was bleeding out, dying. But the more they yelled at me, the more I realized I had already chosen my course. I just had to make them understand why. Silverbell. Both of them quieted, staring at me. After a long, pregnant pause, Calamity asked, And what's Silverbell got to do with any of this? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another episode of Stable Talk. Before we get started, I just thought it would be great for everyone to know how Skybolt likes his name spelt, and that is a capital S, K-Y, small b for Bolt. Sky, small b for Bolt. He loves it when you, do, when you spell his name like that. In fact, I would really like it if everyone in the comment section would leave a comment Spelling his name out like that. He'll really, he'll appreciate it. He will love you guys so much. Remember, that is capital S Sky, small b, Bolt.